I'd say welcome back to the show, but this is a new show. This is our podcast show coming to you from our fancy schmancy studio. <laughs> it's our closet. It is our closet. It is our closet. We yes. are we're in the middle of moving and packing. And uh, this is the only place that we could find that would be quiet. This is true. And even when we move, we're probably going to continue this in our closet to the new spot. Just because uh, we're poor. <laughs> <laughs> I am your host, Nikki Awesome. This is my co-host. Husband, Patrick <laughs> Awesome. Chef Awesome as well. A lot of you might know him from our vlog episodes as Chef. He, he is a chef. By the way, I, it's not just like some sort of uh, cartoony name that I... What's the, what's the cartoon I'm looking for? South Park. South Park. Yeah. He is actually a chef. And he is kind of a chef, too. <laughs> so we realized that we never formally introduced ourselves on the vlog episodes or in those episodes. So for those of you that are listening on your podcast platforms and are not watching this visually. I am a 40-year-old female. I have long brown hair that pretty much goes like past my boobs. It's up in a ponytail right now. I'm not wearing any makeup. I usually don't wear a whole lot of makeup. I am Asian, Pacific Islander, European. I have like olive skin pretty much brown eyes. I'm wearing my gray awesome possum short sleeve t-shirt. It's got a little possum playing the banjo on it. And my husband, Chef Awesome, is sitting to my right. And you are? I am in my, I don't want to say mid 40s, my <laughs> early 40s. Um, Your awesome 40s. <laughs> yeah, definitely awesome. Um, I don't know. I do I a physical description of myself? Is yes. that necessary? Yes. Um I am Do you give a physical description of yourself? Yes, for our viewers who are um even if they're watching this through YouTube, they may not be able to see. They might be visually impaired. Got it. All right then. So that matters. And I have short brown hair, brown eyes, uh -huh. like long walks on the beach. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I love to eat food. And he is wearing also another like heather gray short sleeve shirt. He's got a, I don't know, a beard and like a, like a short stubble. Yeah. I haven't shaved in a while, so I have to. And what do you guys think of his voice? Do you like his voice? Bedroom voice. Bedroom voice. 24 hours 24 a day. Seven. He's always got a bedroom voice, guys. Seriously. That's how our child got here. If I haven't mentioned that before, it's how our child got here. The Awesome with Autism show is all about our lives and how we live it being autistic and neurotypical so neurodivergent so far neurotypical so far as far as we know <laughs> we're kind of going through a process with chef as well i was uh, diagnosed at 37 years young i'm 40 now i'll be 41 next month happy birthday to me so this was actually the culmination of a long journey through therapy for many 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 years of which I actually started out going to therapy for relationship therapy. I was divorced at the time from my first marriage, um, and that relationship was uh, 10 years. And then I was divorced, and I wanted to um, figure out what I needed to do to better myself for the next relationship that I would get into if I did. At the time, I was not looking to be in a relationship. I was dating. Actually, when I first started, I was kind of dating. I, mean, I only went like on, on, a, on a couple of dates, maybe a few dates, like two or three dates, um, meaning like separate dates with separate people. And it was annoying the shit out of me. I'm going to be honest. It was annoying me because my approach to it was from a neurotypical standpoint. And at that time, I was not diagnosed as autistic. So I had no idea that I should have been taking it from a whole different perspective. Now, my therapist at that time suggested that I go the online route when it comes to relationships. And so that is how Chef and I actually met and we have been going at it for eight going on nine years. <gasps> Woo! 
but we got married we got married later on but we'll get into that a little bit later so going back to myself so I was late diagnosed my parents got divorced when I was two years old and then they remarried to separate people and I had uh, two siblings from each of those marriages two half half siblings is what we call them here um, all family nonetheless and um, my personal heritage from one side of that family is obviously all American. I am, let's see, one, two, the second generation to be born here in the United States. My grandfather and my grandmother from my mother's side were born in Germany. So that is part of my heritage is European, German. That's that side. And then on the other side for my dad's side, his parents were born in the Philippines. So again, second generation Pacific Islander, Asian American, depending on where you're looking at the map and which, uh, I guess, genealogy or DNA test you take. I don't know. Anyway, so what, the things that I know are that, okay, I know some culture from Hawaii, which I do have family and one of those tests did reveal that we are Pacific Islander from Hawaii and then obviously the Philippines. We even got Korea um, from my grandmother. Um, and then I haven't done one for myself and my mother has not done one, nor has my grandmother on that side, but we know German pretty much. One of these days I should get one of those, huh? I should get a DNA test and just see, and it's gonna be like, nope, you're none of those. <laughs> neurodivergent yeah <laughs> that's what it'll say and then um of course we have our charlie awesome which by the way short little plug for charlie awesome he is starting his own youtube channel car called charlie awesome tv and i'll put a link in the description down below or whichever podcast platform you are listening to i'll try to link that up here but otherwise it is charlie awesome tv you can use the at symbol charlie awesome TV and you should be able to find his channel. He wants to be a gaming channel and a toy channel and an overall fun channel. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be doing. An awesome channel. An awesome Charlie awesome channel. Our other son is technically his stepson, but we just call him son, dad and son, that's it, uh, is my oldest, Oliver, Oliver Awesome, who he comes from my previous marriage. And you may see him going in and out of our vlogs. He'll be in some of them and he won't be in some of them. And that is because obviously from divorce, you share households. So we're going back and forth uh, between households in that regard. So that's why you see him sometimes and then there's other times that you don't. And then where I grew up, let me think. <laughs> so I don't have a specific city or town that I grew up in because my parents got divorced when I was so young. There was quite a lot of moving when I was young between both my biological mother as well as my biological father. So the majority of my upbringing occurred in the South Bay of the Bay Area in California, mostly Campbell and the San Jose area. I do have lots of family in San Francisco or South San Francisco. I have family in Southern California. I have family in Oregon. I have family in Texas. I have family in Indiana. I have, I actually have extended family in New York. And there was one other state, I think, that we, that I have family. But yeah, so, and then later on, my, my dad moved to uh, the Sacramento area. So that was... That was a lot of moving growing up. And then, of course, because they were divorced, going between those two households, I grew up both a city girl as well as a country girl. So I've got love for or fond memories, both good and bad, of, of mostly one place, not necessarily the other place, um, the country area. So, But we'll get to that through more episodes of the podcast later on. How about you? Me? Well... Uh, I'm the oldest of four. I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> Insert joke. Insert don't you know. Yeah. Where, where, hun? Okay, where so in the Midwest I'm from are you from? I'm from southeastern Wisconsin. 
<laughs> I'm trying to hold it back. <laughs> um, so, a uh, little town, Kenosha, right in between Milwaukee and Chicago. Oldest of four. Uh, divorced, divorced parents like you. So we have Mars those. Cheese Castle. We have a lot of these similar timelines and backgrounds, right? We do. Um, yeah, I grew up with uh, immigrant grandparents, so from Germany and Yugoslavia, now Serbia. I don't know. It was a pretty, pretty good ish ish um, upbringing, I suppose. Um, I, there were some. Obviously, the parents got divorced. There was some alcohol and drug abuse early on, so it was kind of some difficult things to navigate through at those ages. Um, so I've learned a lot from that. Yeah, I think I, I because because of upbringing and maybe it's because of I don't I don't I'm trying to figure out why. It, maybe it is because of my uncles or. Um, family on my dad's side, perhaps because of on my my mom's side too, that I avoid alcohol as well. Um, <clears throat> I was never exposed to it directly, like in in my nuclear household. I was never exposed to excessive amounts to it. Only when we went to um, other family members' houses was I exposed to that. But otherwise, uh, my dad doesn't drink at all. And that's because I believe he actually has an allergy to it too. Like he just, it, he, he complains that it uh, causes him to lose his breath, stop breathing. So it's almost like having an asthma attack. The same thing happens with me as well, but I didn't figure that out until later on, like in my 20s when I first had my, or when I, when I had my first sip of alcohol. And that's when I was like, oh, hey, I'm getting a little short of breath. What does this mean? And then later on I found out, no, that's an allergic reaction. So stop drinking that because otherwise you'll go into full anaphylactic shock. And then when I traveled to Italy, in my mid 20s, I actually did go t into anaphylactic shock when I was out there. So it was it was twofold. One, I had a sip of I think I, I think it was wine. I don't think it was the white elephant. I can't remember which one it was now. No, you know what? It's probably both because I had wine, a sip of wine earlier during dinner, and I also had some shellfish from inland in in Siena, which they suggest at that time, don't do that. Only go to the coast to eat seafood. Back back in those days, this was like the mid 2000s when, when I did this. And then I had a white elephant drink later on and I just, they gave me a straw. I didn't know any better because I don't drink. They gave me a straw and this big drink and I just sucked that thing right up like it was a soda. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, woo! <laughs> and then later on, like, I was like, oh, I don't feel very good. So then my two roommates, we were walking back to our host mom's house. And on the way, all of a sudden, I was having shortness of breath. And then by the time we got to the house, I think because I was moving around and circulating everything through my body so quickly, that's when the anaphylaxis happened. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I was... I didn't know any better. I didn't know to, you know, go to the hospital out there and that it was free. So I had to basically breathe through it with my roommates all night. And my <clears throat> my mom or my host mom was like, what? Why do you look so tired? And I told her she was like, oh, my God, we can take you to the hospital anyway. So if you haven't noticed, that was a whole like story, life story rant. That's going to happen all the time, show. every day, every day, <laughs> all day. Every day. Because... Especially when I'm trying to fall asleep. And then it's just like, I get the dissertation of the wrap-up of the day. Let me recap my day for you. Let me and let me start from when I woke up. <laughs> let me start from when I woke up when I was two years old. And so then it takes about an hour... <laughs> 
or two and I'm feeling super guilty because I'm trying to be attentive <laughs> and a good husband and a good listener and supporter and I I crash <laughs> he does crash <laughs> often often so this this but this is one of the traits I need a white flag <laughs> <laughs> it's just a sock. Get that. one of your socks. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it on the bedside table. <laughs> it's gonna be a little flag, and that's gonna be my safe. There, word. That's. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be my safe word. That's what we need. That's what I need. I need a visual. I need a non-human like visualization of time out because that's one of the traits of autism where you keep talking and talking and talking and you don't realize that the person has checked out because you're so into your conversation and then the brain is like, no, you have to finish this conversation. Finish it or else. <laughs> You know, it'll it'll throw off your flow. You're not a good person. Like all of these just thoughts come flooding into your brain. And then because I'm older, too, I'm trying to measure whether or not I am a good person <laughs> with the conversation. Like if I, I need to finish what I started, because that's the social rule is or that's what that's that's what a good thing to do in society is to finish what you started, right? And so I take it literally and apply it to everything. <laughs> Absolutely. It's exhausting. It's, it is exhausting because some of these things are things that cannot get done in a day, but they're things that, you know, take a lot of time, like, you know, weeks or months to finish, but it's still sitting in my <laughs> brain at the forefront, finish it, finish it, finish it, finish it. Okay, finish the project. project. Okay, cool. So I think... Sometimes for neurotypicals, neurotypicals, just they're just like out of sight, out of mind, or just like, ah, it's no big deal. Whereas me going through therapy and recognizing that, hey, when you have these things sitting in your brain, this is actually clutter in your brain. So you need to release it. And some people do it through writing um, or speaking it um, and just getting getting the thought out of their head so that it can clear the way for other things that have been sitting in the queue for a while. So I'm, I'm not sure if that type of therapy is used on neurotypical brains, but that is what my therapist used with me. And I took it literally and I take it to heart ever since. Finish what you started. On top of that, it's also, I think it's also in The Four Agreements, that book that they told me to read was the four agreements. It's like fin finish what you started or something like that. Speak, yeah. speak impeccably or be impeccable, be impeccable with, with your, your word. word. Don't take anything personal. Don't take anything personal. Basically give everything, like give every little thing that you do, you should give 100%. Right. And, and that's, that's, to me, that's 100%. Like 100% means a start and a, and a, and a finish, an end. Right. So 100% is going through that. And then sometimes, you know, I used to, I used to run, you know this. I used to do a lot of a um a lot of uh what am I looking for? Marathons. Thank you. So, you know this. I used to do a lot of marathons and not only would I run to the finish line, but I would run through it to make sure that finished is finished is is finished. But I mean that's like the sentence Yes. <laughs> you ran you ran through it, I think. I think I did. <laughs> I finished things. <laughs> channel or on this show obviously our autism and how it um, impacts our relationship our family life our social life our work life all of those things we're going to talk about finance we're going to talk about family obviously mental health travel technology you and I are are getting into you know a few things we're learning things about digital currencies and how all of that is is culminating through the years all these things that are going on currently as of this uh recording we have had the ftx collapse so that's something that's in the news right now in regards to finance as well we are in a well, well it's debatable as to whether we are in a recession most of most of the the ceos and everybody right now are saying yeah 
super, super high inflation. We're, we're, this is the recession. We are in it right now. Other people are saying no. So those are things that we'll talk about because obviously we are doing this podcast in our closet. So inflation's infecting production. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe we should hit them up on the coffee page and be like, help us buy a desk. <laughs> Can't do this. Can you help us? It's hot. Can you help us fix our air conditioner? Because that's not our response. Oh, no, that's true. I mean, we, we so we rent. We don't buy. That's another thing that could that's going to come up is you know with finances, <clears throat> renting versus buying. And we we forgot to mention something about you. What's that? It's in regards to all of our oh yeah durable medical supplies sitting behind us, but. Uh, all right, so I've been a type 1 diabetic forever, it seems. Yeah. More than half my life. Yeah. Wow, that's weird when you say that. More than yeah. Half my life. Well, almost. We're getting there, right? Yeah, almost two thirds. But... Yeah. And so, in that regard, there are reasons why, you know, we continue to rent versus buying, especially out here. We are coming to you from Orlando, Florida currently. We're moving to an area just outside of Orlando, to the west side, by the way. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Where we are right now, we're not, we're not happy. This, this was actually a move from Oregon. We were living in Oregon for five years before this. We moved last March, March of 2021. We moved from Oregon to here. We lived in Oregon for five years, and we loved that little town that we were in, but the opportunities were very limited there, as far as both of us were concerned. I was in the uh, hospital industry, medical industry, and the only way to move up with my position was to return back to a very expensive schooling. At my age, I don't want to rack up a whole lot of student debt, which that's another thing, current events. We are now dealing with the Biden administration's debt relief program has been stopped by some courts. So both of us have you been approved stop i know i'm doing it again quit it <laughs> it's, this is the thing you haven't been approved yet right or you're waiting for your uh, my application is in i haven't gotten a response okay. but um i've been approved i don't have a whole lot of student debt i yeah it's very little student debt but regardless that's another thing that we're going through and that is something that's not guaranteed if i were to go back to school to you know become a nurse or whatever and rack up hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of dollars in student student loan debt because we've got our two kids. And for chef here, the food industry is in, taxing. It's yeah. just taxing. How was it in Portland? Uh, Portland was miserable because it just felt like, you know, there were a lot of headlines at the time that it was like the food scene, you know, to, the place to be, and it just was kind of like glorified bar food. Yeah. No matter where you went. There were some really f spectacular spots, but not like mm -hmm. um, my desire to be in California to cook was. So mm -hmm. California, you have better ingredients. You just have everything is, I don't want to give them this credit, but everything there was better as right. far as the food goes. Right. And you were in California. You were You were at... Oh, right. So, I mean, that's kind of like a good little recap on who I am, you know. So, from Wisconsin. We're going to go back. We're, it's, yeah. It's uh, been 15 minutes. It's fine. <laughs> so, in 2010, I won the scholarship to go to culinary school. Mm -hmm. And that was my ticket out of my hometown. So, that was a really great opportunity for me to go to one of the best culinary school in America. And then... Um, Hopefully, just not have to return home and like, yeah. Uh, so, from from Wisconsin to New York, and then New York to the San Francisco Bay Area, California, and then moving down to San Jose and meeting you, yeah, and then Portland, yeah, and then after so it's that, just been everywhere. We have been <clears> everywhere, <throat> and our you know our our love child is neurodivergent himself. We are currently going through the the whole process in regards to an ass continuing his assessment out here. We started an assessment for him out in Oregon, and then now we're finally able to get back to that now that our insurance is well established and we've kind of learned the area over the past year as to how they handle 
these things out here in Florida because it's it's slightly different than Oregon, but the coverage for us is roughly the same, if not slightly better, at least for him. Um, and that's because of the company that I work for. I don't know if you can see. Can you see? Um, so what I'm pointing to for those who are just listening is I have a, a, a blue and white pillow with uh, little Mickey patterns on it, Mickey Mouse patterns. And so that uh, my boss, Mickey Mouse, does not have a cow, I am a cast member. I do work at uh, Walt Disney World here in Orlando, Florida, but all of the opinions and views expressed within this show are those of mine and not representative of the company. There you go. There's your PSA. <laughs> you happy, Mickey? I hope so. I think he's very happy. Okay. So yes, going back to all those assessments and neurotypical neurodivergent, our youngest has severe food aversions. And so we are going through a whole process with that because at this age, this, this is a time in his growth where it's really, really important to get the nutrients that he needs to grow properly without too many uh, medical issues further down the road. So we are trying to intervene now to see if there's anything that we can safely do for him that will help him later on, that will increase his chances of being healthier later on versus having more medical issues. And that includes also testing for type 1 diabetes. We get him tested. When he, when he was younger, we had him enrolled in TrialNet. Unfortunately, under the last administration, that the funding for that got cut. So we were not able to test him every year for type 1 diabetes, and they look for certain genetic markers to see. And they, and they were looking for something. Antibodies. Is there protein? Antibodies. There we go. Yeah, yeah antibodies. Something. Yeah, you know what? He, so... I'm going to, I stand corrected by Mr. Diabetes himself. <laughs> it is antibodies. And the reason why I want to mention this is because for anybody that is, has children who might possibly be diabetic or for anybody looking into this, what TrialNet does is they test first for the antibodies. And if the antibodies are higher um, or there's, those markers are there, then what they do is they start doing like genetics and things like that if you consent to that. <laughs> And that is usually as a result if you have a direct relative. So like mom or dad that have type 1 diabetes, that's when they'll go further with all that. They just don't want to be too um, invasive with kids that age, especially. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Guys, he's like staring at me like so you know how he has bedroom voice he gets bedroom eyes sometimes too and he's doing it right now oh now he's not <laughs> i was trying to why i i'm trying to um engage oh okay so <laughs> he's serbian you guys and sometimes he gets like this serb look where, you know, like that whole area, I feel like they're like depressed all the time because <laughs> they're like in constant war. I'm not like, I don't want to, I don't want to be offensive to individuals because we do have a major war that's going on in Ukraine right now. Like it is no joke, the things that are happening over there. Um, and I guess however you want to see who started what, uh, Putin started it, okay? The show's official stance is Putin started it <laughs> and shouldn't be there. But otherwise, culturally or, you know, just without all that stuff in general, without the wars, but you just, you, you go hang out with Serbian families or Croatian families, which I have, by the way. I have traveled the world. I've traveled all throughout the former Eastern Bloc and hung out with the locals I don't know, maybe one of these days on the vlog channel, I'll show some photos of that. I know I'm rambling again. Okay, so anyways. Wrap it see? up, sister. <laughs> Look at this, but he's doing it right now. I wish people <laughs> who were l just listening could see. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> but maybe it's because I cannot 
see now you're smiling, so it's like okay, this it's obvious that I think I think he's happy. Or maybe he's just saying that I'm goofy. I don't know. But there's so many times where I cannot tell what he how he feels about something. But I can't. I don't know if it's because of like the Serbian culture, because that's just how they are. Like some cultures, you cannot tell if somebody what they're feeling. Just I don't know. But then there's other times where it's like it's a combination of autistic not being able to tell alexithymia as well as being married to you. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so for those who are visually watching, the way that. I can mostly read emotion isn't through the eyes. I actually read here. Um, so here, like the mouth basically is what I'm looking at. And I'm looking to see if there's any um, increases in like the width of your mouth or, you know, whether you're smiling or frowning and, and all of those things. But the, the problem is, is sometimes people can frown, but they're joking or they're happy about it or it's it's something else. It's some nuance that I'm just like, it, it makes me second guess often so I don't I don't know I, don't know. I think they need a white flag <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I'm just kidding oh man you know what <laughs> you know what I'm going to start seeing in the comments because I'm posting this to YouTube for those who are just listening on your podcast but you know if you if you are able on your podcast platform able to leave comments i'm going to start seeing a bunch of white flags in the yeah. comments i'm right there with you stop fine then what do you want to what i'm just kidding. oh okay I'm kidding i'm gonna be the first to comment you are yeah i know what you're gonna put <laughs> in the comments so now our our life i don't know neurotypical neurodivergent Oh, and one of these episodes, we got to talk about the pregnancy. Because there was a lot of neurodivergent fun stuff there. Mm. <laughs> we have to relive that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Like the cleaning, the cleaning. In the middle. Yeah, that one was fun when I was talking about the cleaning. And I have pictures, too, actually. So, I mean, some of it is, is you Incriminating? know. Incriminating? <laughs> <laughs> it's justified, but then other there's other parts of the conversation that the way I was conveying it to you, you were just like, I'm just going to stand here and nod my head because she's very, very pregnant. Yeah, that was a tough one. <laughs> it was very tough. It was like, I wasn't meaning it for it to be an argument. It was, it was an extreme venting is what it was, but I think it came off as an argument, like an, an actual argument between us because we don't argue it was very no i know it was very confusing yeah i, I couldn't I, keep up yeah i can tell i was exhausted by the time i was done and i was like tired sleepy yeah yeah but yeah we don't we don't argue very often i think i think we're just we the both of us with you know each of our therapy we communicate so much like communication was key for my therapy at least <clears throat> Years, I don't know, maybe not so much, but we communicate so much and I'm communicating so much. And I think because we are so busy with family and work that we just, there's no room for arguing. And true. And I think because of the trauma too. True. Trauma, childhood trauma. And then I have things from past relationships, trauma in that regard that I just, I don't have, as they say, enough spoons in the autistic world. I don't know if they say that in other... I don't even know what that means yet. I think I, I have know. to find out the etymology of that because... I don't, I don't know either. I'm just saying it because that's now what they're saying. I, okay. But I literally don't understand why there's not enough spoons because you only need one spoon... To eat ice cream? Exactly. I don't know. Why do we need more? I mean, <clears throat> yeah. And it's usually a big spoon, so... Maybe it's based off of size. I would say I don't have a big spoon. I have a small spoon. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that's, that's us. Yeah. I mean. That's the Awesome with Autism show. A very paraphrased version, but we'll yeah. get into the details as we kind of go and figure this all out. For real. Yeah. 
So we like to travel on the on the vlogs, the Awesome with Autism show, all of those vlog and episodes. There's a lot of travel where we go to local places, and then also um, recently we went on a Halloween on the High Seas cruise with Disney or on the Disney Dream. We've traveled across the country. We used to go up and down the West Coast, and now uh, next year I've got some plans to go up and down the East Coast. And then international travel probably won't be for a couple of years. So we'll see. We'll see, because we're waiting for the kids to get a little bit older before we do some international travel. No, he, oh, oh, the one by ourselves. Is we gotta right? go, Seuss, but oh, we gotta just, yeah. we need to travel. Just more. go. Yeah. Just go do it, yeah. So yeah, so that that show or that part of the show, you're gonna see a whole bunch of home vlogs, travel vlogs. I don't know what else. Cooking. Sometimes I get cooking stuff up there. On TikTok, sure. it's 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 me trying to be a, a wise ass to you, <laughs> but also like being a wise ass. But then there are some things that he does, you guys, that just like oh my gosh, brings me to my knees. He doesn't, he thinks that I'm joking when I put this stuff on the TikTok. And I mean, it's kind of a joke, but it really does bring me to my knees. Like when he talks or when he, when, when he's like doing things with his hands, he does. I'm glad I have that effect on you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think that's it. You know, if there's any questions out there, audience members that might be in a relationship with a neurotypical and a neurodivergent, I mean, we're kind of a good resource to that. I think that's kind of what we aim to do with this channel a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that in the videos too. I'll put little um, descriptions in the video itself on the bottom, kind of describing what sensory thing I might be going through because autism is not necessarily so physically apparent. A lot of it is, quote, an invisible, an invisible thing. So it's hard to film it and I, I feel weird if I'm all of a sudden just gonna like put down a camera or turn the camera on when I'm stimming or what have you. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> Cause then it's like, stop. I know I'm doing it again. <sighs> In conclusion. Can I finish it? I don't <laughs> okay. Yeah, finish your thought. Okay. Get it out. I just feel weird with some of the things that, you know, to film because then it's like, well, she turned it on and now she's acting. So it's like, I can't. You can't, you can't satisfy the people in that sense. Like it would almost have to be you filming and like catching something, right, going on. So by chance. <sighs> yes, true. Okay. Welcome to the show. I'm exhausted. We are on TikTok, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, and Coffee. We might be on Patreon soon. Not sure about that. Links are all in the description down below. It's probably going to pop up on the screen here for those who are visually watching right there. One, two, three, four. Click everything down below at the Awesome with Autism show if you're looking for us on YouTube. Thanks so much for hanging out with us on our new, our first episode. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. First Very hot. First, you're hot. I think we can time stamp it by like the sweat marks on my shirt. Absolutely. Let's do it. We'll go like one sweat one spot. Yeah. Two sweat spot. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Like one armpit. Yeah. Now, now it's on the chest. It's on the back. God. The, the tramp stamp. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, let's go. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> So this was actually the culminate my approach to it. Miso! Okay. That one for you, careful. And you put it literally like pretty far down. Right there. 
new. Noob. Charlie would call me. Yeah. 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 Oh. How's it sounding? 